In today's video, we're going to be talking about keyboards, and in particular, what's in this box here. If you've ever really researched or looked at keyboards, especially higher-end mechanical keyboards, you'll have almost certainly heard of the IBM Model M. It's almost like a kind of legendary keyboard at this point. The Model M was released by IBM in, I think, 1985, early 80s, and they continued to be sold all the way through the 90s, or into the early, and mid, early to mid-90s. This wasn't like a particularly high-end or special keyboard you'd seek out. It was just a keyboard that came with IBM computers. But this was back in the days when computers cost thousands and were extremely high-end, so the keyboards they came with were often pretty good. And unlike most rubber dome keyboards, this has what's called a buckling spring mechanism, which is very unique. If you listen to it, it's extremely clicky and extremely tactile, and feels very different to most, keyboard, most modern mechanical keyboards with Cherry MX switches, because under each key is a spring, and when you press the key down, the spring buckles, which flips a little plate, which presses a membrane inside the keyboard to detect the key press. And they're absolutely great for typing on. So as you can see, this is a very old keyboard. This particular model is from 1986. All IBM Model M's have a sort of what they call a birth certificate on the back, a little sticker, which details the, the model number, serial number, and a date. This one's very faded, so I was able to just about get the information off it. So you can see this was made in 1986, actually made in Scotland, so not far from me, actually. But yep, this is a 1986 model. And this is one of the earliest models. You can tell this because it's got a silver IBM logo in the top right. This is the earlier model that had this. And this particular model is quite interesting, and in it doesn't have any LEDs, but it does have the section for them. That's because when this Model M was released, the IBM AT computer was available, which would have come with this keyboard with the LEDs. But this particular keyboard came with an IBM XT, which is an older computer, that didn't support the LEDs, so this keyboard doesn't have any. And these silver label models are extremely sought after and pretty valuable nowadays. In fact, when I bought this, I bought an original IBM XT computer on eBay. It was a listing showing, it was listed as an original XP machine, so it was spelt wrong. The whole thing was an absolute state, the computer didn't work, and the keyboard looked filthy. But I bought it purely because I saw this keyboard in the listing, and it was way cheaper than buying this keyboard on its own. And I was able to clean the keyboard up, restore it, got it work, working really well in perfect condition. And I was even able to fix the computer, so I made a video about that, showing that computer working. It was quite an interesting pr project. But yeah, this one, the earliest IBM Model M's. I promise I'll get onto the box in a minute. Next up, we have a later model, which is this one here. This particular keyboard came out in 1989. You can see there, that label's a bit better condition. I've put a bit of plastic over it to preserve it. And you can see this one is extremely similar, with a couple of little tweaks. So you'll notice this one does have the LEDs because this came with a computer that would have supported the LEDs. And you'll notice the IBM logo has moved from the top right to the top left, and it's grey in colour. And this is indicative of the sort of second generation of Model M's that were made by IBM. After this keyboard was made around about 1991, IBM then sold the keyboard manufacturing to Lexmark, the same company that made the, made the printers, or made the printers. Are Lexmark still going? Don't know. It's been a long time since I bought a printer. But yeah, they sold the manufacturing rights to Lexmark, who continued to make them. And the Lexmark Model M's look very similar to this. They have the logo up here, but the logo is changed to blue, so it's a blue text on the same sort of white background. Lexmark also made a few tweaks over the years, so they did things like stop using the two-part keycaps that these have and replace it with single-part keycaps. Some of them also had permanently attached cables, whereas these earlier models have detachable cables. But essentially the keyboards were basically identical, they continued to make the Model M's. Lexmark also made keyboards for other OEMs based on the Model M design. Which is why out there you can quite often find Model M's that aren't branded as IBM. You can find some that are Dell, for example. Those tend to have a rectangular logo in the top left. So yeah, they're also made under other brands, which is it's quite interesting if you're trying to buy them second hand. You can sometimes get them cheaper if you find, say, a Dell one that someone's just selling as an old Dell keyboard, and they don't realise it's actually a Model M. But equally, a lot of people throw them out because they don't realise their Model M is actually quite valuable. However, in 1996, IBM stopped offering the Model M keyboard, and as a result, Lexmark stopped manufacturing them. However, these were obviously still very well regarded keyboards, and people really liked them. So, also in 1996, a bunch of ex-IBM and Lexmark employees got together and not only bought all the patents from IBM for the buckling spring design, they also bought the manufacturing facilities from Lexmark, and they formed a company called Unicomp. And Unicomp still exists, and to this day, they still manufacture IBM Model M keyboards. Although they're not IBM anymore, they're just Unicomp Model M's. 
And here we have one here. So this is the Unicomp Classic. And it obviously looks a little bit different to the IBM Model M, but actually, if you compare them, they're extremely similar. So obviously, this one's black, this one's beige. That's purely a colour change. You can also buy these in the beige colour scheme with the two-tone keys, and they look even more similar to the original Model M's. I just happen to get a black one here. But if you type on it, it's still that very satisfying buckling spring mechanism. It does feel different to obviously this and this one. Over the years, the design changed, it got a bit cheaper. That, that, a lot of that was Lexmark's doing, especially in the mid-90s, they made them a little bit cheaper. But other than that, it is still extremely similar. So this is a Unicomp Classic. And I bought this around about 2012. You can see on the bottom, it was made in 2012. And as you see, this was also made in the USA. These were all made in Lexington, Kentucky, and they still are. That's where Unicomp have their factory. Now, if you look at this, what you may also notice is it has this sort of blank area in the top left where you'd kind of expect a logo to be. Now, if you remember, I said when Lexmark made them, they also made these for different OEMs and they put the logo up here in a sort of rectangle. And that's because when Unicomp bought the manufacturing from, IB from Lexmark, they also bought all the original tooling. And that includes the tooling and the moulds they used to make these cases and all the parts for these keyboards. So even though this keyboard was made in 2012, it was still made using tooling from the Lexmark era. And Unicom have continued to produce these over the years and it's been, they've been really pretty good. But because they're using such old tooling, you do sometimes get little quality control issues. It's nothing that severe. This one's actually a pretty good example, but sometimes the case doesn't look exactly perfect. Sometimes on the back you get little imperfections in the plastic. Some people have had things like really badly moulded feet, things like that. And of course this is 2012, so this is already 10 years old. So since this keyboard was made, all that tooling is now 10 years older now. And obviously they're struggling to keep that tooling alive and being able to still make keyboards with a satisfactory quality. In fact, you can actually see how this is an original mould because we take this original 1986 Model M, look on the back of it, you'll see in this corner here, there's a space for a speaker. There's no speaker present in this model. This is only the ones, the speaker is only actually installed on IBM terminal keyboards, but it has a space for a speaker. Now, if you look at the Unicomp one, there's no space for a speaker, but you can actually see in the moulding where they've literally just filled in the mould from where the speaker would have been. So this uses the original tooling. But yeah, while it's nice having all the original tooling and it's kind of nice to sort of have that connection back to the original Model M's, if it's starting to cause quality control issues, that's not ideal. So in 2020, what they did is they went out and bought a whole load of new tooling. And with that, they launched a new product called the new Model M. So obviously, I would still call this a sort of new Model M. This is a new Model M, that's an old Model M, but this is the new, new Model M. Or new, new, whatever. It's a new version of the Model M. And what they've done is they basically made this with new tooling to hopefully be a lot better quality. They've made a slight redesign to the case, but kept it very faithful to the original. So I'll be really interested to see what this is like. So what I'll do is I'll take a look at, take it out of the box, take a look at it. I'll try it out a bit and we'll talk about really how I find it, and we'll compare it to a Unicomp Classic, as well as back to a couple of proper old school original Model M's. Because I'm really excited to try it out. Because I, I absolutely love the Unicomp Classic, but it, the quality isn't maybe as good, and mine's had quite a lot of plastic rivets, we'll talk about these later, quite a lot of plastic rivets have snapped, you might be able to hear it if I tilt it. Which basically means it's not quite as good to type on because these rivets are snapping and, and falling out of it. So we'll talk about these as well, because this is like the one weakness of the Model M's. They're built like tanks, but that's the one sort of flaw they have. So yeah, in this box, we have one of the new Model M's. I'm really excited to try this out. So you can buy these directly from Unicomp, or there's other retailers that will sell them. So I'm in the UK, so I bought mine from the keyboard company. Not a sponsor or anything, they just, I've just used them over the years and they've always been really, really good. If you buy them from Unicomp, you get some customization options. But with all the import, with, with the amount of cost of international shipping and import tax and all that sort of stuff, it worked out about the same price, if not cheaper, to buy it from the keyboard company and then get say, a UK company to go back to. So that's the model I went for there. And this is the UK layout with a USB interface and white and grey keys. They also sell these with a PS2 interface and also with all grey keys and also with different country layouts. So if you're buying these, make sure you buy the right one. Especially places like the keyboard company, they sell a lot of different versions, including the PS2 versions, the US layouts, different 
color schemes and all that sort of stuff. So just be very careful because you kind of end up playing spot the difference with the pictures and it's very easy to buy one and accidentally say buy a US ANSI layout when you wanted a UK ISO layout or buy a PS2 interface when you want a USB interface. So just make sure you buy the right one. But yep, if we open this up, let's see what we got. So that's it in there. So my first impressions, I've, I, I deliberately, I've been looking at this box all day, not wanting to take it out and try it because I wanted to get my first impressions on camera. But that looks really good and I absolutely love the white and grey colour scheme. I'll obviously need to see it when I get it out properly, but that looks really good. It looks a lot better than the Unicomp Classic because this is only really available as far as I'm aware with all grey keys. And I mean, it looks fine, but it just doesn't look quite as sort of stand, doesn't stand out as much as the sort of two-tone keycaps. So that's it there, so let's try and get it out of the box. Like that. So that's it there. Some sort of FCC statement. Yeah, whatever. Cool. Oh, stop, stop. Ah, just potentially things if there's basically common faults that they probably obviously they must have to deal with every so often, so that's fine. So that's it here. That's it there, we'll get that unpacked and we'll take a look at it. So, so far it looks really, really nice. I just, I, all I've really seen so far obviously is just a colour scheme, but I much prefer that colour scheme to the old style grey keys on the Unicop Classic. So in theory this should be a slightly refresh design we'll take a look at, but also just be a lot better built than the ones made with the old tooling. So I'm really excited to try this. So. That's it there. That looks really nice. In terms of typing on it. Yeah, that seems really good. Sounds closer to the original uni the my old Unicomp rather than the original Model M's, but still feels excellent. So yeah, that's the keyboard there. So what I'll now do is I'll go away and use it for a little while. I'll come back with my review and then we'll take sort of take a look at it, compare it to the other keyboards and maybe even take it apart and see, see inside it. But first impressions, I'm really impressed with it. So yeah, time to go and try it out. And we're back. And I have to say that I'm super impressed with this. This is definitely going to become a daily driver keyboard for at least a while. This is such a nice upgrade over the Unicomp Classic. It's just absolutely brilliant. So looking at this, you first of all might look at it and go, well, what's the difference apart from the new tooling and a different colour scheme? Well, actually, the new tooling is obviously a completely new case. And it is actually redesigned. Now, it looks basically identical because they've kind of kept it fairly faithful to the original. But what you'll notice if I bring in an actual Model M, you'll see it's actually quite a bit smaller. So if you compare, say, front to back, you'll see the new one is so much shallower front to back, which is great. Other than that, it's up until this point at the back, it's basically the same height and profile, which is great. They've kept that, but they've just cut all this unnecessary plastic off the back, which is actually really good because the one downside, especially even with that Unicomp Classic, which is the same size as this original Model M, this just additional wasted space just takes up so much desk space. It's also slightly narrower widthwise, but not by much, you know, maybe a centimetre narrower. But I suppose there's a limit to what they can really do without making the keyboard itself smaller. The actual keyboard and the keys are all the exact same size and exact same spacing as an original Model M. They've just cut off a little bit of the plastic, which is quite nice. It makes it a little bit more compact and easier to fit on a desk. Especially if you think about it, when these keyboards were made, mice weren't really a thing. Whereas nowadays, you know, you're going to have a mouse alongside that, so you want to kind of free up some desk space. However, what I really like with this is they've kept a lot of the original design decisions from the original Model M. So you'll notice, for example, it has a curved key bed. So you see this whole area here is curved and the keys all slope up, which is the exact same as the original Model M. You can see that's got the exact same sort of curve profile under there. Now Unicomp do do another keyboard called the Ultra Classic, which was an earlier attempt at sort of miniaturizing the Model M, taking it and making it a bit more compact with all, without all this excess plastic. And it's probably a good keyboard, I've never really used it. I think they still probably use some of the older tooling. But what they've also done with that is they've got rid of things like this nice curved profile and this little lip around it. So it's not quite as original to, or faithful to an original Model M. Whereas with this, it literally looks like an identical to a Model M. Just, well, with a slightly shorter bit at the back and obviously a different colour. So yeah, the actual overall design of this I really like. They've kept it very faithful to the original. It's even just silly little things, like at the top here having this lip. All the Model M's have this lip along the top, which means you can put a pen on it, and if you lay a pen there, it holds a pen. 
that's now in the world of like RGB keyboards with extreme game mode stuff and fancy controls and adjustable trigger depth and all this sort of stuff. The standard feature is having a thing that holds a pen is not very exciting, but you know, that's again something the old Model M has. I mean, I've been using the Unicomp Classic recently just in the run up to buying this. I've just found myself using that, I mean, that's actually quite neat. So it's just nice that they've kept a lot of the original features of the Model M, just made it a bit smaller. Now, in terms of the overall build quality, I'm also very impressed. The overall casing just feels a little bit more polished than the, than the older Unicomp. Just things like the gaps down here are a bit more consistent, the moulding just feels a lot better. If you look on the back, there is still some slight weird sort of wobbliness down here, but I suppose this is also partially just due to like it being a smaller company making the products on a sort of smaller scale. Obviously, I'm very used to mass produced, mass market plastic moulding. This is obviously a little bit more boutique, so they've probably not got quite the level of refinement. But apart from that, the moulding is really, really good, and it's a lot better than the old, old Unicomp Classic. It's things where you really notice it on like these, say, these keyboard feet. When you flip these up on this one, they solidly click into place because they're all, you know, new moulding and it's designed for that. Whereas on the older keyboard, these are always a little bit loose and they, they click, but they don't... That one's actually okay. This one's a bit mushier. Like, they can kind of just be a little bit mushy. They're not quite as good. You can see it's kind of bent a little bit there. Whereas this one, these feet are just so much more solid. And I think a lot of that is just due to the fact that it's a new design. Also things that you don't have this little random blank bit from the old Unicom or, or the old Lexmark moulding. You've just not got that there anymore. It just feels a lot more refined. Another thing is the printing on the keycaps. It's probably roughly comparable quality between the old Unicomp and the new one. It's not really a huge difference, but it does look really good. These are die sub keycaps, which is really good quality. It basically means that the text is moulded into the keycap so it won't rub off. It can't ever rub off, which is ideal. So that's sort of top quality. That's what all the Model M's have always had. The printing is pretty good quality. It's maybe not quite as sharp as on the original Model M's, but equally it's really good. And it seems pretty consistent and everything seems fairly straight, which is good. It seems silly, but on a lot of the older Model M's, or also the older Unicomps, this one's not too bad for it. But you do get some keycaps where the text can be a little bit angled, like not perfectly straight. On this one, that doesn't seem to really be a problem, which is good. Now one slight, maybe you could call it a downgrade, but not a really huge issue with this one, is it doesn't have two-part keycaps. So on all these older Model M's, you can see the keycaps are two parts. The top piece comes off like that, it's just an empty piece of plastic and underneath it leaves a little sort of stub that is actually part of the switch mechanism. And then that goes in there. The Unicomp Classic, at least my one here, also has two-part keycaps. I don't know if they still make them with two-part keycaps. Obviously, this is a 2012 model. They've maybe changed since. But this has the two-part keycaps as well. Whereas this one doesn't. These are just single-part keycaps. So essentially, this is actually a keycap that goes down into the mechanism. We'll take a look at this later. Now, it's not the biggest deal in the world. And in terms of being like historically accurate, Lexmark also did a lot of keyboards without remote, without the two-part keycaps. So it's not really a huge deal. It just means that for, say, cleaning the keyboard or replacing keycaps, you've got to be a little bit more careful because you have to pull this out and actually reveal the spring and put it back on carefully. But it doesn't mean you can't take the keycaps off. It doesn't mean you can't replace the keycaps. It's just a bit of a different process. But we'll take a look at that in a minute because I'm going to swap my red escape key onto this one just because why not? Another massive quality improvement with this is the deck flex. So this is the Unicomp Classic here, and if you press it in the middle of the keyboard, obviously quite hard, you can see the whole deck does kind of flex a little bit. You know, it's got a few, it doesn't come across that well on camera, but you can see pressing down there, all the keys kind of flex. On the other hand, if we bring in the 1986 model, the, sort of, the original, the Beast, and there's a, a noticeable weight difference between them as well. This is obviously a lot heavier and we do the same test with the same amount of force, well, as best I can do the same amount of force. You can see there's not as much flex there. There's a little bit, but there's not as much. Now, if we bring in the new Model M, what's really nice to see with this, if I get the keyboard out of the way so it's sitting flat, or cable out of the way, there is basically no deck flex. In fact, there's probably less deck flex on this than there is on this one. Now, this is old and it's probably got some broken rivets, which won't help. If you compare it to the 1989 model, which is actually in extremely good condition internally, that deck flex on that is probably actually very similar to 
to the deck flex on this new model. I think it's maybe got a little more deck flex than the 989 model, but that is really, really good. That feels a lot more solid, so that's a really nice quality improvement. So it's all well and good talking about how it all sounds and poking the deck and looking at them. But of course, the most important thing with the keyboard is how it is to type on. And I am really, really impressed with this. This is much nicer to type on than the Unicomp Classic. Now, it's maybe not quite the same as the original Model M's. However, you've also got to bear in mind that these keyboards are over 30 years old. They will feel different to type on just because they've been worn out, they've been heavily used. So maybe these don't feel quite the same as this. This feels maybe a little bit snappier. These will have some sort of wear and tear on them. However, if I compare this new Model M to the Unicomp Classic, it's a lot better. This keyboard just feels a little bit mush, not as much, it's just, the, it's the sound as well. It's just got that slight spring twang in the background that you don't get on this. But this just feels a little bit crisper to type on than this, if that's anything to sort of describe it by. You, you, you have to feel it, you can't really explain how a keyboard feels, but this just feels a little bit crisper and a bit more tactile and a bit snappier than the Unicomp Classic. And while it's not exactly the same as these older original Model M's, I have to say that this feels a lot more close, a lot closer to the old school ones than this one does. So yeah, it definitely feels really, really, really good to type on. So what I'll now do is I'll go in and try and do some audio recording samples just to try and listen to the key sound on each of them. I don't know how it'll come out, but what I would say to sort of listen for in it is the sort of sound of like a spring twanging after you've pressed the key. It's quite pronounced on the Unicomp Classic, whereas on the new Model M, it doesn't have quite the same sort of twanginess to it. Again, not quite as similar, as quite, not necessarily quite as good as the proper old school ones, but it is pretty good. So let's go into the audio recording sample and see if it comes out at all and you can actually hear the difference. Okay, so let's go through all the old keyboards and see what they sound like. So hopefully that sound demo maybe helped, I don't quite know how good it was, there's better sound demos of this out there I'm sure. But yeah, in terms of sound, it definitely sounds a lot nicer and a lot more faithful to the originals than the Unicomp Classic. It's not quite there, but it's definitely very close. Now as for really any other comments about it, one thing I have noticed in terms of the overall appearance is the case is actually quite shiny. It's fine, it just, it's just different, I think it's because it's got this sort of mottled finish on it, that on this one's a bit much finer pattern. So it's almost a lot shinier than the Unicomp Classic and the original Model M's. But that's not really a big deal. It's just something to bear in mind, really. Now, in terms of usability, I can't really fault it. The thing is with this, you need to bear in mind that this is a pure typing keyboard. You would not want a keyboard like this for gaming because the keys have quite high travel and you have to press them quite far down for them to activate. You can't really do super rapid key presses, so they wouldn't really be that good for gaming. Now. I'm not a gamer, so that's not really a problem, but it's important to bear that in mind. Don't buy this as a gaming keyboard. Another thing to bear in mind is that unlike most gaming keyboards or most keyboards using, say, Cherry MX switches, this doesn't support N key rollover. So N key rollover basically means that you can hold down any keys on the keyboard, as many as you want, and it will register all of those. This keyboard doesn't support that. It's officially, I, say, I think it's two key rollover, so essentially you can hold down two keys at once, now it is set up to have them, all the modifiers do work, so you can kind of hold down all the modifier keys and still press another key and that'll work. So sort of key combinations that are like Control, Alt, Shift and the letter, they're all going to be fine. 
but for gaming where you're going to want to hold down a lot of keys at once, you may again find issues where certain combinations of letters won't necessarily work. But again, that's just something to bear in mind. It's not a gaming keyboard, so it doesn't support features like that that you might expect. But the only other thing to really bear in mind, and it's what a lot of people reviewing this seem to have commented on, is these LEDs. They're very bright blue, which sounds silly. When I saw the initial reviews, I thought, how bad can it be? People are just moaning. But yeah, these LEDs are very, very bright. And even if you're sitting you know, at an angle away, like a sort of normal typing angle, you do really notice these. They're not coming across quite as bright on camera as they are to my eye. But yeah, these are quite annoying. And compared to the old Unicomp Classic, which has just normal green LEDs, or the older model M's, which also had green LEDs, these do kind of, they, they, they attract too much attention, I think. Now, for me, it's not really an issue because I use a Mac. And on a Mac, they don't support NumLock, so I'll never have the NumLock LED. On a Mac, the number pad's just always active as a number pad, as if NumLock's permanently on. So I won't have a NumLock LED on. So for me, the only time I'm ever really going to have an LED is if I've got Caps Lock on, which, you know, isn't really a problem. But if you're using this on Windows and you're going to have NumLock on all the time, this may get a little bit annoying. Now, looking online, I've seen some people posting it just on Reddit or whatever, saying, oh, I've got my new Model M and they've got green LEDs. So I don't know if maybe Unicomp responded to the criticism and moved back to green LEDs, or if the green LEDs were older versions and then they brought out the blue ones. I I don't know. So if that's going to be a, a problem, I would definitely suggest maybe emailing Unicomp and asking what color of key, what color of LED you're going to get. I bought this from the keyboard company where it came with these ones, probably because that's the stock they've got. So if Unicomp have maybe changed the green LEDs since, obviously some retailers might not have the stock of that. So it's just worth checking. Again, for me, it's not really an issue. If you were so inclined, you could obviously take it apart and change the LEDs, I'm sure. We'll take it apart in a minute and see what it's like. But yeah, that's just one complaint I have is I've seen people moaning about it and thought maybe they're just moaning for the sake of moaning. But yeah, these blue LEDs are a little bit too bright. But other than that, I am so impressed with this. It's an absolutely amazing keyboard. So I suppose the final thing to do is take it apart and see what's inside and compare it to the older keyboards. Because I'm really interested to see what they've actually retooled. Obviously, they've clearly retooled the outer casing, but have they retooled any of the internals? Have they retooled the plastic piece that sits under that all the, the mechanism is in? Have they done anything to the metal base plate? Is that, has that been changed or is that still original? So yeah, time to take it apart. And what we'll also do is we'll swap out that escape key for my red escape key because for some reason I've got this weird, you call it a tradition, I don't know. Basically, whatever keyboard I've got on my desk as my primary keyboard, I'll put a red, red escape key on. Don't know why. So like that red escape key that's on my Unicomp Classic has moved between every model M over the years. So yeah, I'll swap that one as well. We'll see how you replace the keycaps on this. So the first thing we'll do is we'll swap over the keycaps, just to take a look at how you do this. This is something quite common with mechanical keyboards or high-end keyboards. People will change over keycaps for, well, fun, really. Now, obviously on this old model M, it has these two-part keycaps, so the top comes off separate from this piece underneath, whereas this has single-part keycaps, so they don't come off separately. But they are still removable. I'd recommend using a key puller. These are very, very cheap things. They're very worth using. And if you slot that over the key, to the escape key, like that, pull straight up, it'll come off. That came off very easily. And under there, you can see the buckling spring mechanism. So as you can see, there is a literal spring under the key. And what happens is when you press the key cap down, that piece there pushes down the spring, the spring buckles under the force, and that then causes a little sort of foot underneath to flip down and touch a membrane. And that's what makes contact, and that's how it works. So that's how a buckling spring key cap works. Now, this looks like this completely standard Model M keycap, so that's definitely not really changed, at least as far as I can tell. So I should be able to do a direct swap. So obviously this is a two-part keycap, but what I should be able to do is just take off this piece underneath. That comes off. As you can see, that is basically identical to the new Model M. And also these are identical to the old Model M's as well. So all you need to do is put the keycap on, make sure to put the correct one on, is you basically want to do, what you want to do is tilt it so the spring sits in the middle of the channel. So you don't want it like that where the spring's touching the edge. You want to tilt it back so the spring is kind of sitting in the middle and not touching any of the sides. So, so you just need to get it really in position like that. Then line the keycap up, clip it over and push it down. And that's on there. And now that's changed, it's clicking, that's fine. If you did that and it didn't click, you just need to take it off and do it again. Sometimes the spring gets caught and it doesn't work. But that's there. Take the new keycap, put that on, and that's it sorted. 
And then with the old one, we can put the standard escape key back on. Like that, let's take that there. Do that like that. And that can go on. Like that. And this is the cool thing with Unicomp, is obviously these keycaps are the same design going back to all the original Model M's. So even if you've bought a classic old school Model M and you'd say missing a keycap, you can buy them. In fact, if you're super observant, which you wouldn't be, I'd worry if you were this observant, but with this Model M here, the 1989 model, if you look on the bottom and you were to look up that part number, you'd realise that's the part number for a German keyboard, not an English one, not a UK one. However, if you look at this, this is a standard UK layout. And that's because at the time that I bought this, I was able to get this, this German keyboard for so much cheaper than our UK model. So what I did is I bought this and then I ordered some keycaps from Unicomp to convert it to a UK layout. So you can see here, for example, that key with a pound sign on it, that's actually a new Unicomp keycap, whereas that dollar sign one is an original one because you can see it's not got, not got a Euro symbol where the more modern ones do. So that's an original keycap. That's a modern replacement Unicomp keycap. And the font is maybe slightly bolder, but you can barely tell. Similarly, I think some of these keys have changed. I've definitely changed a lot of the number pad keys because these obviously had German text on them. And I even replaced this LED cover with the one that's got English on it. And like, you would not be able to tell because Unicomp sell all the original parts. And before people complain, I have actually still kept all the original parts, so I could restore this back to its original state if I wanted to. So that's a really cool thing with Unicomp. You can buy all the parts from them, keycaps, springs, all that sort of stuff, and they'll work all the way from the oldest original Model M's all the way through to the newest models. Now in terms of keycaps, the Unicomp keyboards maybe aren't quite as flexible as Cherry MX keyboards, just because with Cherry keyboards you can get keycaps from all different manufacturers, all sorts of boutique keycaps, and they'll be interoperable. Whereas with Unicomp, you really need to buy, well, the only, you can only buy the keycaps from Unicomp. However, they do have a decent range. You can get things like Color WASD. You can order custom keys in different colors with different legends on them. They do all that sort of stuff. You can order full key sets if you wanted to. And one set that I'm potentially considering is the Mac key set, because obviously it's a Windows layout. I use a Mac. They offer a key set that basically replaces Control, Windows and Alt with Command, Option, Control on both sides. And it also comes with a new set of function keys that basically replaces all these with the Mac ones that would just have shortcuts for things like the volume control, the brightness control, mission control, all that sort of stuff. So I might try that out. I'll need to see. And if I was doing that, I'd probably also order a few new letter keys because this is obviously a UK PC layout. The UK Mac layout is a weird oddball mix-up between a US keyboard and a UK keyboard. For example, the hash key, which is normally over here on a UK keyboard, is on the three key where it would be on a US keyboard except it's accessed using option instead of shift. It's a slightly weird layout. So what I might do is order the Mac key set for all the modifier keys and also order just a few extra keys just to replace them just so it matches the Mac layout. I might do that, I'll see. Obviously to do that, I would need to order it from the US from Unicomp, which is not super cheap in terms of shipping, but ordering keycaps, the shipping isn't that expensive. Whereas ordering this keyboard from Unicomp would cost about $80 in shipping, which wasn't ideal. But I might look at the keycaps, and if I get them, I might do a video on them in the future if people are interested in that. Now, the only other thing I would say with this that's worth maybe bearing in mind, especially if you have a Mac, is the layout of these keys down here. Because for some reason, the Windows key is next to the spacebar on the right-hand side, but in the middle on the left-hand side. Whereas if we compare that to the older Unicomp Classic, you'll see the Windows key is in the middle on both sides. Now on a Mac, this is a little bit annoying because on a Mac, you don't have control, Windows key and Alt. You have control, option and command. And the command key is what you use most of the time where you traditionally use control on Windows. So to copy on a Mac, it's command C, which would be this key here. Now, usually on a Windows keyboard, when you connect that to a Mac, the Windows key becomes the command key and the Alt key becomes option. So it means these keys are kind of swapped. So this would be command, this would be option which is different to what you'd have on, say, a Mac laptop keyboard. But on a Mac, it's very easy. You can just go into the keyboard settings and swap these keys around. And that means this is option and this is, con this is command. And at that point, it's fine because then it matches the laptop's keyboard. For me, I regularly switch between using the laptop on its own and using a keyboard at my desk. So I really need to keep the keyboard layout to match the Mac layout on the laptop. Otherwise, I just my brain does not have the capacity to switch keyboard layout and it just doesn't work. So what I do is I connect this to my desk, my Mac, and then I swap these keys around so I have control, option, and command. 
However, because this size flips, when you sw swap those keys around, it means that this keyboard, this key becomes option and this becomes command, which is different from the laptop. Now, it's not the end of the world because most of the time I'm going to be using the left modifier keys, but it is a little bit annoying because sometimes if I just want to reach over and just do a shortcut with my right hand, I'll, I'll use these keys here and it means I need to remember that this is option or this is command, not this. Now, I haven't tried it, but there is third party software out there for Mac for remapping keys and that should be able to differentiate between the left keys and the right keys and would allow you to remap these correctly so that this can become command. But with the built-in Mac OS features, you don't have that. So you either have to have the left-hand side matching the laptop or the right-hand side matching the laptop, not both. As I said, it's not really a big deal. It's not the end of the world for me, but it does kind of, I do kind of wonder why they've done that. I don't really understand that, but anyway, that's what they've done there. So just worth bearing in mind, if you've got a Mac, the sides are slightly, the, the keys on the side are swapped around from this side, but whatever. That's enough rambling on about that. So now we can do the more fun thing and take these apart and see how they compare inside. Also, before I do that, just I've just flipped this over to take it apart and I've just noticed one difference that the new keyboard has to the older ones. So on the Unicomp Classic, you'll see there's these holes down the front here. And these are actually liquid drainage channels. If you look at the keyboard from 1989, you can see that also has these liquid drainage channels. And essentially on the base plate under the keys, there's little guides that almost guide liquid to these holes on the bottom. So if you know spill a drink into the keyboard, it's not ideal, it's not a waterproof keyboard by any means, but at least the liquid would come out the bottom of the keyboard and not fill it up. Now, if you compare that to the original keyboard from 1986, you can see that doesn't have those liquid drainage channels. So that was clearly added later. However, unfortunately, the new keyboard also doesn't seem to have those liquid drainage channels. So that's a little bit annoying. It's a bit of a downgrade, I suppose. It, I mean, I, I wouldn't test it, but I definitely wouldn't want to spill a drink into this. This definitely had something spilt into it before I had to clean it all off, but I don't know what it was. I think it's something I spilt onto it when I was like moving, moving house or something. But yeah, it's a shame not having these liquid drainage channels. Bit of a downgrade, I suppose, but equally, they're not really waterproof keyboards. You don't want to spill a drink into them anyway. And if people are wondering, that's why I'm not using these original classic keyboards I've got here. The last thing I want to do is be using this like super rare 1986 keyboard as my daily driver and then pour a coffee through it. So I'd rather keep these nice and safe away from my sort of clumsy hands. But yeah, that's just one little sort of observation I've just made there while I was taking it apart. But anyway, let's now open these up. So we'll take the older one apart first, the Unicomp Classic. So to open these old model M's, they have these little sort of hex screws inside them. So you need to buy a 5.5mm nut spinner. So that's what I've got here. So that's on that end, it's just a sort of hex bit and it's 5.5mm. So I bought this one here, it's a Vera one. I'll put a link to this in the description because they're quite hard to get this particular size. And you need one that's got a very thin surround around the hex piece. If the head's too thick and it's just got a lot of metal around it, it won't then fit down into these holes so you won't be able to get it out. So I'll leave a link to this in the description if you want to take a model M apart. So all we need to do is take these screws out the back. And I'm really interested to see how this compares, how much of the internals they also reworked, or is it just purely the outer casing? So it comes off there. And now we can flip it over like that and take the top off. So that comes off like that, that lifts off, and that reveals the inside. So here we can see the inside of the new or the Unicomp Classic. So you can see we've got, up here you can see they've got the membrane, that's sort of sitting on top. You've got a big metal back plate, a membrane in there, which is basically what you get in a normal rubber dome keyboard. The difference is this obviously has the buckling spring mechanism above it instead of rubber domes. You've got all the keycaps there, and you've got this plastic that's obviously the back plate. Now this does look like quite old moulding. You can see there, you've got this part number here that's stuck on it, and this older part number here, it's almost been like covered over. So, being, so that, I presume, is again old Lexmark moulding that's been used to make that. So it'll be interesting to see if they've changed that on the new one or they've kept that. So that's that there. And then in terms of taking this part further, we can pop the cable out. You can see it's got a fixed cable here compared to the original one. That'll come out. And then this will lift out like that. And that's now the mechanism. So you can see that's it there. 
and you've got this big metal back plate here. And if you look around, you'll see one of the sort of major sort of failure modes of these keyboards is these rubber, these plastic rivets. And you can see this is actually already damaged. Quite, quite a few of them are missing on this keyboard here as well. So on a Model M, you've got this piece of plastic here that is bonded to this metal plate. And it's bonded by these plastic rivets that are pushed through. And over time, these can break off. And you can see that actually a few of them have broken off even inside this fairly new keyboard. And over time, that causes some deck flex, which is possibly why the deck flex is so bad on this one. And it just sort of damages the typing feel. So I'll be interested to see what they've done on the new one. Have they changed that or have they kept this? I suspect they've probably kept it the same. But this is something that's worth bearing in mind with Model M's. And where you hear people talking about bolt modding them, basically what that means is they take off all these plastic rivets, drill holes where they used to be, and put metal bolts through to replace them. I mean, I'm not going to do it on this because it's just a modern day Unicomp classic. I could buy a replacement. But it is worth bearing that in mind. If you've bought like a classic Model M and it's got all these rivets missing, you can bolt mod it. So yep, that's the Unicomp Classic there. What we'll now do is we'll also pop open one of the older Model M just to see how that compares to this, and then we'll take a look at the new one. So I'm now taking the screws out of the 1989 model. I'm going to take this one apart, not the proper rare old one, just in case. But they should be very similar, so that'll come out here. And as you can see, it's a very, very similar internal design, so you can really see how similar these keyboards are. In fact, when I mentioned on this one, you've got that part number that's kind of blanked out on this mould and then they've added a new one on there. We can actually see on this keyboard here, that has a part number in the place of the one that's blanked out on this old one. So I suspect that's actually, you know, it sort of shows the original moulding from this has been used in the new one. In terms of taking it apart, it's very similar, although the controller is in a different place on this one. So you just pop that out carefully at the back there. This then comes out, and as you can see, that's all the internals. If we flip it over, you'll see, again, all the plastic rivets. This one's got a sort of birth certificate inside it as well. And you can see this actually has more plastic rivets, so I think the Unicom Classic's got quite a few missing rivets. But on this one, the controller hangs off the bottom here. It's got that massive grounding strap attaching it as well. So that's there. And interestingly, what you'll notice is if we compare the base cases on these, so take that out and we'll take the internals out of this new one as well. What you'll see is on this one, because it's got that removable cable, you can see here it's got space for that connector at the back and two pegs that go through the PCB that would hold it in place. On the new moulding for the Unicop Classic, or it's not new moulding, you'll see that even though the back of the case is now filled in, it still has these pegs there where the old PCB would mount, so that's kind of cool. I suppose maybe in the Lexmark days, maybe the PCB was still mounted down here and the cable routed outside, I'm not sure. But yeah, that's kind of interesting to see. And over there you can see, for example, where the speaker would have been that's then been sort of blanked out. You can see the, the grill's all filled in and everything, but it still has the original little, these little ramps either side of it. So you can definitely see kind of where they've got the original moulding from. However, the other super interesting thing with this plastic, I mean, I'm talking about plastic and calling it interesting, I find it interesting anyway, is this date code. January 1996. Unicomp formed in April 1996. So that means that this is definitely a mould from the Lexmark days that predates Unicomp. But what it also shows is that at the time that this keyboard was produced in 2012, this mould was already, already 16 years old. And then nowadays, if that was still being produced, that would be 26 years old if they're still using the same moulding, which I presume they would be. I don't think they've replaced the coupe tooling for these. So you can kind of see why the quality is starting to, they're starting to have these quality control issues because they're using tooling from 1996 on these older keyboards. It's also inter interesting seeing this was made in January 96, so not long before Lexmark stopped producing these. I wonder how long they actually these moulds were meant to last. Like, were they only meant to last a few months of production or a year of production, really? you know, and they're being used way beyond their life. So yeah, that's kind of interesting to see that, yeah, that is definitely the original mold that was used for this. So now that we've seen what's inside the old school Model M's, let's take a look inside the new one and see how it compares. So now the exciting part, what's inside the new keyboard? Now, interestingly, and I suppose it's probably a good thing, they've actually now got rid of those stupid, annoying hex screws and moved over to Torx. So I can actually just use a normal screwdriver to take these out, which is a lot better. I mean, 
the older ones were absolutely fine and it's you know more faithful to the original or whatever but it did mean that if you ever need to take your keyboard apart you needed to buy a very specific screwdriver to do it and I literally had to buy this the other night purely to make this video because I didn't have one of these so yeah it's actually good to move over to sort of standard screws so that makes a lot more sense so get these screws out and see what's inside the new model in oh I've thrown a screw across the room and the only other thing I've noticed here actually is they've actually got this cutout piece here where it looks like you'd have a detachable keyboard or detachable cable but they've still got a fixed cable and this is obviously all new moulding so I wonder if they're ever going to release a version of this that has a detachable cable now they have got a space saving version of this which is basically this cut in half or with the number pad cut off and that is a detachable cable but interestingly this model, the new Model M doesn't have a removable cable don't know why be interesting to see if that ever happens in the future or if you fancied modding it you could probably sort of drill a small hole in that fit a USB jack and actually make it removable the removable cable doesn't really bother me too much because realistically I'm never going to take this, use this without a cable given it's a wired keyboard and I don't really transport it so I don't really need to take the cable off for transporting anything like that, anything like that, anything like that. but yep that's it now right we up the screws removed let's see inside it for the first time so that comes off like that and yep that looks looks like new moulding to be honest on this plastic here so that's the top case there you can see obviously that's all new but that's what you'd expect because this is the part they've already said that yes is new moulding now in terms of the design of this piece here it looks very similar to the original but it is diff there are differences actually it is different so if we compare that to the Unicomp Classic which is obviously the closest replica of it so we'll compare to that they, at first glance they do look extremely similar however you can see the metal plate's been redesigned because on the Unicomp Classic it's got these little these pegs that go through to hold this metal piece in place and on the Unicomp Classic those holes are at the extreme edges whereas on this one there's nothing here and the holes are here and here so they've actually redesigned the metal plate as well which is quite good the controller looks basically the same um, it's got a sort of code name of Ruffian V6 this is Ruffian V6 underscore zero underscore C just about to see that there this one is Ruffian V6 underscore zero so it's not got the C but other than that it's basically the same so I think the controller is probably the same in this however Unicomp have stated that they're having issues sourcing the chip that's used on this controller at the moment and they're trying out a new controller so if you buy a newer one this may actually be a different controller but yep they have actually changed the metal which is quite interesting but more interestingly and maybe more positively they've also changed this plastic piece here so as you can see on the Unicomp Classic it's this kind of rough mottled sort of type of finish and it's got this blacked out piece of text here and this new piece of text that's been put on here whereas on the new keyboard you can see that is perfectly smooth plastic with sort of new text over here so that looks like they've changed the moulding for that as well which is quite positive because this moulding here it may affect the key feel because obviously it has the pieces that the keys go up and down inside and also in terms of durability if, this, if all these pieces here are new moulds they should hopefully be more durable because on my Unicomp Classic one of those is actually damaged if I can take the, the backspace key off you'll see there one of those is actually snapped off now I took the keys off to clean, clean them for this video and noticed that was already snapped I think there was a little bit of plastic hanging off at the bottom so it clearly been snapped before so maybe I snapped it many years ago and forgot but I haven't done anything particularly rough with this so it's not great that that's snapped and that could potentially be due to weak spots because of old tooling so it is really nice to see that they've actually completely redone that bit of plastic which is good so I suppose the final thing to do is to lift this out the case and see what it's like underneath so lift that off there ideally not break the brand new keyboard I just got because that would be very sad oh he says ripping the cable out take the cable off there and that comes out so as you can see that's the base plastic again all new but interestingly they're, they're definitely planning on using this to have a connector in it because or at least they've considered it because you can see again it's got the same peg style as the old one has for the where the old PCB was mounted even back on the 1986 model and there's a little bit on the plastic here it's slightly shinier presumably where it was meant to be cut out so that looks like they've had plans to put a detachable cable in, in there and ultimately haven't 
but it does mean that if you wanted to mod this, that would definitely be moddable. It's just interesting seeing that. It's also quite kind of kind of nice to see they've actually done it the exact same style with these pegs that were done on the old keyboards. It's just a shame they haven't used them. But yep, that's the base plastic there. So now, finally, let's take a look at the underside of the main keyboard itself. So if we flip that over, we can see that, yep, they have used the same plastic rivet design. So time will tell to see how durable these are because with Model M's, they're built like tanks, but these do break off over time. So you do kind of want to take a bit of care with it. Now, hopefully it won't be as bad as my Unicomp Classic. Admittedly, I have, this keyboard has been through several house moves. I didn't use it for a very long time, so it was chucked in boxes. I haven't been the kindest to this thing, so it has lost quite a few rivets. But I think because it does have these plastic rivets, it's not the sort of keyboard you want to carry in a bag every day. You want to take a little bit of care with bashing it around. But yeah, it's, it's a bit, bit annoying to see they've used those, but equally, there's a limit to what how much they can really change with the design without completely changing the design and not really being faithful to the Model M anymore. But yep, yeah, so that's the back plate there. But it is really nice to see that it appears as though everything here is new tooling, including this back piece here, and the metal has also changed. That's really nice to see it is actually a fully new design. Where I was, I was kind of worried it would just be like a new outer casing with these internals. But actually, it does look like they've improved it quite a bit. So yeah, that's sort of look inside it there. As you can see there, one final thing is, even though the sort of membrane does connect onto that PCB, you wouldn't really want to take it off. You can see that the LEDs are right at the top of the PCB. So if those blue LEDs did bother you, you could fairly easily desolder those and replace them with different ones. So that's just something to bear in mind if that was a problem. But yeah, that's look inside it definitely really happy to see how you know they have actually changed all the tooling but yeah i suppose the final thing is to put this back together along with all the other dismantled keyboards that are surrounding me and wrap this up so there you go that's a look at the new model m from unicomp i'm super happy with it the overall style looks absolutely great i like how they've made it a bit smaller but also kept the original sort of design cues from the original model m you can tell it is a model m the new two-tone keycaps look absolutely excellent in terms of the typing feel, it's super close to an original Model M. The only difference I can really feel is literally if I'm switching between them to try and feel the difference, I can maybe feel it. But if I were to go away for an hour and come back and type on this, I wouldn't be able to sort of remember any difference. And it definitely feels and sounds a lot better than the, than the older Unicomp Classic that I have. So yeah, super happy with this. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. And if you're interested in buying this keyboard, or things like the nut spinner that you need to open up Model M's with, I'll put links in the description.